Friday at Pizza Flicks. Hang on to your seat. Tonight it's a tight noir-esque thriller from 1954 by Princess Pictures. The suave Lee Bowman stars as an international diamond dealer who is trapped by a complex web of false truth. Introducing the great Wilhelm, the world's premier trapeze artist. Toss of four continents, king of the aerialist, the man who laughs at mortal danger in a death-defying exhibition of aerial magic, ending with a supreme and incredible feat of all time, the magnificent Breathless, fabulous, triplet somersault. Ladies and gentlemen, the great Wilhelm. Here it comes. Great Wilhelm is always terrific. <laughs> How are you, my dear? Fine. Did you like my performance? I thought you were wonderful, but you scared me half to death. 
Don't you agree, Margot? I do. I could never be his wife because... Ah, but when it lasts... <laughs> Tell me, Molly. Why do you settle for a man such as John when I am available? <laughs> and why do you allow your sister to make this mistake, Philip? Huh? <laughs> but tell me, what are you doing after this show? Oh, Marlene has got the theater club by 11. I don't see how you two manage it. You have to work during the day. Marlene sings at night. Look, you have seen this show before. Why don't you come back to my dressing trailer, huh? Just give me a few minutes till I change my clothes, and then I have a bottle of wine ready. Shall we? Uh, why not? The show's over after that act. Well, I underestimated you. Just give me a few minutes, yeah? Why didn't you come to see me last night? You promised. Why, why, why? I'll see you when I can. Now, come on. Off with you. I have friends coming. make the toast to your coming marriage. <laughs> it is logical they should be married. But this one, he is marriage. He is a real man. I would have married her the day I met her if it took only logic. <laughs> Philip will have his appointment at the ministry soon and then... What about you, Wilhelm? Me? Hmm. Oh, I love all women. I love them so much that I do not have the heart to marry one and deprive all the others. <laughs> <laughs> but how about tonight? Where shall we go? Oh, I have to go to work. Oh, I feel like celebrating. What are you celebrating? Why must women be such realists? I feel like celebrating, that's all. <laughs> Marlene has to leave soon for the club. And I promised myself I'd get some sleep tonight. Oh, that makes me unhappy. But we cannot end the evening so rapidly. The three of us, Philip, John and I, we go out. Oh, well, I... Oh, that's all the silence. We drop you at the club, we get you home, and then the three of us We'll have a nice, quiet bachelor evening, huh? I doubt if it'll be quiet. And make sure it is a bachelor evening. <laughs> <laughs> Will I see you later? I'll pick you up right after your last number. Shall we let them? Can we stop them? <laughs> <laughs> now, a toast to the lady. Carla.
How are you guys on the uh, sweetheart of Sigmund Kai? Sigmund Kai? Not Who's this Sigmund Kai? Not Sigmund. Sigma. Ma. Sigma. Greek letter. Sigma. His sweetheart of a Greek letter? <laughs> What's the matter with a Greek letter having a sweetheart? Or vice versa? Hmm? Ah, it's all right. It's perfectly natural. Good oh, boy. It doesn't beat. No? It gurgles. <laughs> well, um... John, my friend. Go home. Just when the evening starts, he wants to sleep. Mm. Philip, come here. Philip, do you remember this girl with the yellow hair and the beautiful blue eyes and... The, uh, <laughs> now, Philip, suppose she has a friend. Maybe not yellow hair, maybe not beautiful blue eyes, but... <laughs> Now, where's the fault? In there. Mr. Hamilton, my name is... I have a drink. Mr. Hamilton, I've come a long way to talk to you. It's nice. All about Marlene. Grace, wonderful girl. I've come to tell you that my life is involved in what you are doing. But I want you to stop. Why did he do such a thing? What's your name? John, ha John Hamilton. May I see your passport? Better sit down. Who is this man? I don't know. Have you ever seen him before? Never. Is that your gun? That looks like it. What's this all about? Take it easy, Mr. Hamilton. Let me ask questions. I suggest you tell me what happened. Well, I, I better get hold of my friends. Is this one of them? What are the names of your friends? Wilhelm Cortner and Philip Rader. They were, they were with me last night. Oh, I see. They were here with me. I, I wasn't that drunk. Go on. Well, they, they came in with me. We, we went to some clubs. We, I must have had a few too many. And then I... And then? Oh, I, I must have passed out. That's, that's all I remember. Very convenient. Well, if you don't believe me, ask them. They'll tell you. Well, well I think you'd better come along, Mr. Hamilton.
Have the defendant brought in. This court is now in session. The trial of the Republic versus the defendant, John Arthur Hamilton, will commence. Will the prosecuting attorney and the defending attorney come forward and state their cases? The clerk will enter the testimony given here with you. I see, Mr. Hamilton. You do not remember much of anything. That's hard to believe. I was drunk. I... I passed out. But you remember the deceased. You recall his walking to your apartment? Yes. Vaguely, I think I do. How well did you know him? I never saw him before in my life. I shall repeat my question for the benefit of the court. How well did you know the man you shot? Your Honor, I object to this method of questioning. The prosecutor is stating as a fact something that has yet to be proven. Objection sustained. Very well, Your Honor. I shall restate the question. Did you know the man who was killed? No, I did not. You claim not to have known him. Then how can you account for his being found dead in your apartment? I can't account for it. Have you ever seen this gun before? Yes. Please explain. It's mine. Serial number and all. What reason do I have for owning a gun? I work for a diamond importing firm. Go on. They insist that I carry a gun. I have a permit. And that gun was found lying next to the deceased. Well, that doesn't prove that I killed him. That remains to be seen, Mr. Hamilton. Now then, as I see it, the facts are quite plain. This man was found dead in your apartment. You were under the influence of drink. It was your gun that killed him. Can you deny these facts? No, I cannot. I see. Your Honor, I've finished my examination for the defendant. Does the defense attorney wish to examine the defendant at this time? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Hamilton, a man has been found dead. That fact has been established. I am anxious to know quite a bit more about the deceased man. Perhaps you can help me. How old was the deceased at the time of his death? How old? I don't know. What was his occupation, Mr. Hamilton? I have no idea. Well, in order to establish a motive for his death, the jury must be in possession of precise facts. Did you ever threaten the man's life directly or indirectly? I, I never saw the man before in my life. Are you certain of that? I'm positive. What business are you in, Mr. Hamilton? Diamond importing. Is it possible that a man in your work might carry valuable gems on his person? Yes, of course. That's, that's part of the job. You testified earlier that your firm required you to carry a weapon. That's right. Why do they require that? Well, obviously, for protection. From whom? Well, from anybody who might try to rob me from thieves. Uh, let me ask you again. Had you ever seen the deceased man prior to the night in question? I object, Your Honor. Trying to mislead the jury. This method of questioning... Objection overruled. Thank you, Your Honor. 
Now, Mr. Hamilton, I... William Cortner will take the witness stand. Do you swear to tell the whole truth? So help you God. I do. Mr. Cordner, what fashion? I'm a circus performer. I am the great Wilhelm. Now then, do you know the defendant? We are good friends. How long have you known him? I met him some months ago through Philip and Marlene Oreda. I see. Were you with the defendant on the night in question? This whole thing is impossible, I tell you. John Hamilton is a good friend of mine. I know him. He could not have killed this man. He's innocent. Answer the question, Mr. Cordner. Were you with him that night? Well, I... Uh... Were you? Or were you not? Yes, I was. For a time. Just what do you mean by that? Well, it's difficult to say exactly. Well, Mr. Cordner, what happened to Mr. Hamilton? Philip Breda and I decided that the evening was over for John. We put him in a cab and told the driver to take him home. That's a lie! Where did you last see the defendant, Mr. Rader? We put him in a taxi and sent him home. You are sure of this, Mr. Rader? Yes, sir. I'm sure. It seems, Your Honor, that we must take some of Mr. Hamilton's words quite literally. He does not seem to clearly remember everything. Thank you, Mr. Rader. That will be all. Marlena. What are Philip and Wilhelm trying to do to me? John, I... John, you had a lot to drink that night. Maybe you just thought they were there. Sure, I had a lot to drink, but I wasn't that drunk. You don't believe me either, do you? But if they were there, why would they lie? I don't know. I can't figure it. This whole thing looks like a first-class frame-up to me. John, everything's going to be all right. Yeah. Well, things don't look so good right now. There were no witnesses. They haven't proven that you did it. Don't you see, John? It's better that Philip and Wilhelm weren't there. I wish I could believe that. You've got to believe it. And so must I. Has the jury reached a verdict? We have, Your Honor. The defendant will rise. State the verdict, Your Honor. We find the defendant guilty of manslaughter in the third degree. John Hamilton, you have heard the decision of the jury. In this country, that verdict carries a sentence of between 10 and 15 years. However, in view of the unpremeditated nature of this crime and the fact that you did not have possession of your full senses, this court is inclined 
to temper justice with mercy. I therefore sentence you to serve seven years in prison. Court dismissed. John! John! That's it. That's the story. So you are not sure, eh? You are not sure you killed the man Ritter or not. Then I must say that you are refreshingly different. Every other man in this claim is sure, is ready to swear by the Bible that he is innocent, clean as newborn lamp. Every cutthroat here will tell you he was sent here by the treachery of someone on the outside, by some strange coincidence, my dear Mr. Hamilton. All the thieves are outside these walls, and all the honest men are inside. But I am not such a fool. <coughs> Only a fool cries wide when the color is black. You take me. They accuse me, little bank clerk of embezzlement. You want to know the truth? No. The truth is I'm guilty. I did what I did and I admit it. I wasn't stupid in taking the money. It was attractive and well spent. It was simply that I was stupid enough to get caught. What about your friends? Did they help you? My friends. I'm a lucky man. I have none. Young man, I am in the mood to be your father confessor. It's an excellent way to while away the time. These friends of yours, they say, they were not present when you shot this man. That's right. And you were drunk. Very drunk. Very. Then it is possible that they were telling the truth. Is it not? A man who is drunk can see pink elephants and purple tigers. What's so unusual about seeing a couple of friends? Perhaps you did see them swimming about your room on a sea of alcohol. Maybe you will find out someday. John. How are you? I'm all right. I'm a little surprised to see you. You're my first visitor. Yes, I know. I can't understand Marlena at all. Neither can I. Try not to be too bitter, John. Marlena has has been very unhappy. She has? We still share an apartment. But but she no longer confides in me. I just don't understand it. Why did you bother to come? I didn't know if anyone was coming to help you. Oh, I, I got all the help I needed. From Wilhelm and Philip in court. John. I don't know very much about right or wrong on the trial. But there must be ways to help you now. Maybe a new attorney could work for a parole or look for new evidence. Fräulein, it is time to go. Margot, will I see you again? Yes, John, of course.
Nothing seems to go right, and the blues in the night come to haunt me. All alone in my room, but your voice in the gloom comes to taunt me. Yet our ways lie apart, oh, my heart has been knocked out of shape. I'm like a bird in a cage that can never escape. Midnight shadows fall, I can hear you calling, and I'm blue. And I'm blue all through the night. Stars are bright above me. No one here to love me. Where are you? Was your love so light? Our hearts were once in clover. And we Devoted brother condescends to pay me a visit. What do you want from me this time? Did you tell Margot to stop seeing John? I know she went up there again. No, I didn't tell her. She can do as she pleases. Oh, wait a minute. Don't tell me you're jealous, dear brother. <laughs> I'm not. Tell her yourself if you don't want her to see him. I'm only worried about your still being her roommate. You might say the wrong thing. I won't have it. You won't have it. You're worried. If you'd stop drinking so much and act like a man instead of... Brother and sister fighting? He's right, Marlene. You should move out. You might say something. Oh, I'm careful to protect your interest. Careful or not, I forbid you to see her again. Don't tell me what to do. Now shut up! Both of you. Now you will listen to me. I don't care what you do with your life. But you won't jeopardize mine. You cheap acrobat. <sighs> now from now on, you'll do exactly what I say. Both of you. Understand? Why don't you get some sleep? Brooding, always brooding. Don't be a fool. That is for old men like me, not for young men like you. What are you thinking about? Nothing. Ah, oh, my dear young friend, don't be a fool. What does it matter whether they lied or not? 
It is done, is it not? Can you call back the days you spent here? Will the truth bring back the two years you lost? Take an old man's advice, my friend. Go to bed and forget it. Congratulations. What? The pardon board has given great thought to your case, Mr. Hamilton. Uh, reviewed petitions made both by Margot Drake and by the officials of your firm. Too many men have walked out of here, Mr. Hamilton, with one thought, revenge. And because of it, some of them have come back. I trust you will not make the same mistake. Thanks for the advice. Good luck, Mr. Hammer. Invite me in? Of course. Forgive me. Surprised to see me? Very. I didn't expect. They, uh, they released me this morning. Margot, I found out that you helped make it possible. I want you to know that I'm very grateful. It's good to see you, John. Can I get you something? A cup of coffee or a drink? No, thank you. I, I don't seem to be able to handle the stuff anymore. Thank you. Thanks. How are things with you and Philip? Let's not talk about that. Tell me. He lost his job at the ministry. Oh? He's been drinking more than ever. We are finished. I haven't seen him for some time. Do you know where I can find him? What do you want with him? I've got to see him. You'd probably find him in a bar. Not the better kind, I'm afraid. Where's Marlena? She should be back soon. And Wilhelm? I haven't seen him. I told you, everything has changed. Have you any idea where he might be? I saw his picture on the paper. He's with the circus in Stuttgart. Thanks, Margot. Where are you going? To Stuttgart. I'll be seeing you.
John was here. He just left. What? How is that possible? He was released today. And he came here. What did he want? He asked about Philip and Wilhelm and you. There wasn't much I could say. What did you tell him? Why? Are you worried? Just what did you mean by that? He seemed to be very anxious to see his old friends again. He did, eh? And very anxious to see you too, I suppose? Does it matter to you? You never went to see him once in the three years he was in prison. And of course you did. That's right, I did. I've always believed in him. <laughs> Where is he now? On his way to Stuttgart. I told him Wilhelm was there. Oh, no!
Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the great Wilhelm, the world's premier trapeze artist, toast of four continents, the man who laughs at danger in a death-defying, fabulous trapeze somersault. Ladies and gentlemen, the great Wilhelm. Do you know a man named Philip Rader? Philip Rader? Yes, I know Philip Rader. He comes in here now and then. That is, when he thinks he can get a free drink. Well, do you know where he'd be now? Try the cafe next door. If he's not there, try the next one. And if he's not there, keep on trying the next one. Thanks. I can find Philip Rader. Have you seen Philip Rader? What do you want? Why, Philip, I didn't know you liked this stuff as much as I did. Remember? <laughs> Go away. No, no, no. I've been away for years. I don't suppose you know anything about that going over I got in Stuttgart. What are you talking about? Never mind. Come on, let's go. You and I are going someplace where we can have a nice long talk. <laughs> Leave me alone. Come on, let's go. <sighs> don't want to talk. Okay. We'll have our little chat right here. Before I begin, maybe you'd be interested in knowing that our mutual friend Wilhelm got a little careless. Or maybe he was a little nervous or up too high. Anyway, he's dead. Dead? Just as dead as he can be. Maybe he should have used a net. 
Now, come on, talk. You were in the apartment when it all began. You and Wilhelm were both there, weren't you? Why'd you lie? I can't tell you. I can't tell you. Why did you lie? I need a drink. I have got to have a drink. Give me a brandy. Go on. It's true. Mordenheim and I were there that night. We brought you in and you were drunk. Very drunk. Yeah, I know. Mordenheim decided the evening was still young. He said he knew a couple of girls. We went into the next room. To phone and Franz. What are you doing here? It's none of your business. I came here to keep a date. <laughs> a date with this miserable drunk? I like him. And what are you going to do about it? Why are you always spying on me? I've told you I'm through with you, and I never want to see you again. And I told you, if you ever went near another man, I would kill you. What have you done? What happened? Who is he? He's dead. My God, Marlene! Have you gone mad? Why did you do it? Be quiet. What are you doing here? Why wasn't John at the club? He got drunk. We brought him home. Who is he? He was a pig. He followed me always. He never let me alone. He spied on me said I belonged to him. I will call the police. You were what? Have you gone crazy? The police must know. You can see you killed him in self-defense. No, they wouldn't believe it. But we will be your witnesses. They've got to believe it. You must get out of here now. Leave him alone, miss. I know exactly what I'm saying. We must protect ourselves. We all have too much at stake to be found here. You, Wilhelm, how would you like to be involved in a murder? What would happen to the great Wilhelm? And you, Philip, for years you've worked hard for that position in the ministry. Do you suppose they would appoint the brother of a murderess? I'd say we blame John. I can't. I'm going for the police. You fool. What if they do accuse John? They could never convict him. There would be no witnesses. They could never prove that he did it. No, Marlene. This man is a complete stranger to John. The court could find no connection, no motive. I guarantee they'll acquit him. It may not even go beyond an investigation. I hope so. All right. Then maybe Jean will suffer no harm. And none of us will be involved. Then you will do it my way. Have you touched anything in here? The telephone. And the doorknobs. Wipe them off, quickly.
And that's the story, John. The whole story. We felt sure you would be acquitted. We never dreamed that, that was they... Marlena. Yes. Have a drink, Philip. You may need it. Operator, give me the police. You mean you could have spoken up, but you didn't. John, believe me, I was going to. I wanted to. Every night and every day, I said to myself, I'll go to the police and tell them the truth. But Wilhelm and Philip said the damage was done. And what was the use? But I still wanted to. Why didn't you? I told you I was living with a lie. A lie is a funny thing, John. A terrible thing. Once it gets a hold of you, you're caught. And when you live with it, when you walk with it day after day and sleep with it night after night, it drains your courage and it becomes the master and you become the slave. And finally, you stop fighting because what's the use? Don't you see, John, the lie made me afraid. Afraid? But I thought you were in love with me. I was. I may still be. I was afraid of the look on your face when you found out. Afraid of what you would say. Afraid I might never see you again. I couldn't stand that, John. That's why I couldn't speak during the trial. I just couldn't. Marlena, if you'd only gone through with it, if you'd gone to the police even after I was sentenced, I would have understood. I told you why I couldn't. But now you're free. I'll be in prison for the rest of my life. Prison of my own conscience. Give me a light, please, darling. Goodbye, Marlena. I'll tell Margot you won't be home. <laughs> 